Hello everyone, I hope you had a wonderful holiday break and are looking forward to the new year. I wanted to share with you my plans for the year 2024 so I could get your feedback. So here it is, so far my plans for 2024 and we're going to start with the top left corner here, the obvious product updates. So we just released a pretty massive update for the procedural city generator. So for 2024, I'm going to be focusing on mostly on the Animal Behavior Kit 1.4 update and the NPC Manager System 1.3 update, with potentially working on the Procedural City Generator 1.3 update probably towards the end of the year. Uh, so for the ABK 1.4 update, I can quickly show you what I have on Trello here. The biggest thing is going to be hybrid animal behavior. That means that you're going to be able to have animals such as a hippo or a crocodile that can be both on land and in water. I also want to add intro, loop, and outro animations to the animals. That's going to make it a little bit more flexible and increase the potential quality of the animations for your animals. Then a couple of other things like the ability for the animal to run away after X amount of damage, regardless of their settings and updating uh, specific parts of the system like the following code and the obstruction code. Those are um, uh, systems that are a little bit old now and I like to improve them to make them more performant and flexible. And then other things like using Niagara for flying and swimming animals instead of my old actor system. This will give us the ability to have potentially thousands and thousands of animals with minimal performance impact and then do things like the death manager, which has been highly requested, which is once you kill a certain amount of animals, they may or may not come back. So that requires us to save some data to disk. And obviously there's some other things here and you can pause the video if you really wanna see what else I'm thinking. Uh, the other one is the MPC manager system 1.3. And for that, you can see here, I'm again going to Trello. I would like to improve the MPC manager even more so it can be used as a pedestrian system for the procedural city generator. I am aware that a lot of you have many assets from the marketplace uh, and a lot of you both have PCG and the MPC manager system. So I'd like to uh, improve MPC uh, manager system to be a full-fledged pedestrian system in PCG. So that's kind of one of the really big ones you can see here uh, with the red. And the other one is add basic melee combat. I know this has been requested a lot. Uh, this system though has its focus on being more of like the background NPC that has a, um, a list of things that does around the day, similar to what you would see in games like Skyrim and I guess now uh, Starfield. But I understand that it may be useful to have even some basic melee combat. So I'd like to see if I can add that. And then there's other things like having the ability for the NPC to teleport to its destination if it's a long distance and the player can't see it. And things like permanence, which again, similar to ABK, if you kill a specific NPC and you go back to that POI, uh, maybe that POI doesn't uh, spawn him again. Um, and other things like adding animation to entrances and the ability for the NPC to spawn directly in a station, which would be very nice. Uh, instead of spawning, walk into the station and then kind of starting, maybe you can just directly spawn him on the station. Uh, and again, you can see there are some other things here that if you want to stop the video uh, to check it out, you can. And finally, <clears throat> for the procedural series generator 1.3 update, that again is quite big. Uh, and if I go back to Trello here, you can see that there are some really big uh, items here like adding procedural intersections. This is basically using geometry scripting. Same thing I did for the plots and sidewalks, doing something similar for the crossroads, which again are right now just a simple blueprint. I love to make that a lot more robust and customizable. I also want to add a simple traffic system to the city. I actually have a project that I worked on about two years ago, and I think it was 4.26. So you can, you can see how long that was, where I had a very simple uh, chaos buggy uh, following a road spline, and it had the ability to do like some basic obstacle avoidance and things like that. 
Uh, I actually, uh, during this break, ported that code, upgraded it to Unreal Engine 5.1 um, <clears throat> because I want to use that as the base for the new traffic system for PCG. So hopefully, if you own the MPC Manager system, you'll be able to use those MPCs as pedestrians and have your MPCs live their full lives in the city. And then once this update hits, you'll also have vehicle traffic system and that's going to finally make the city feel quite alive. So I'm super looking forward to doing that. Then also better integration with the MPC Manager system. This is what I just talked about. I just need to make sure that I update both assets in a way that is as close to drag and drop as possible. And obviously there's other things that you can see here that I may or may not get uh, to on the update, like runtime city generation, and in multiplayer support, seed base generation, etc. So keep in mind that these are just things that I have on that bucket. I may break down these updates. Like you can see here, I already have a separate bucket for like 1.2.2, which may have things like improved driveway cutting and a prop transform manager, which basically means once you the, tr the props inside a building uh, spawn and you make a mess, you knock a table over and you leave, uh, when the props are spawned again, that transform is remembered, quote unquote remembered. So, so it's just more realistic. So things don't go back to the original state when you, uh, when you spawn them again. Um, so those are the plans that I have for my products. I may break this down into smaller updates just to get you guys some of these newer features earlier, but I haven't decided just yet. Uh, I may do that, for example, for a PCG 1.3 because it's way too much that I have right now in this bucket. Uh, so almost guarantee some of that stuff is going to get knocked out to a future update. Then the next thing I want to talk to you guys about was the free community projects. I am looking for a new hosting place, probably Gumroad or itch.io. GitHub is great but it really isn't optimized for big binary files like Unreal Engine projects. and using uh, LFS has been kind of a pain. <laughs> so I like to have a different home so you can just go to one place and find all of my assets. So if you know anything better than Gumroad or H.io or maybe even Mediafire, please do let me know and I will consider it. Then I have other assets like the free racer. That's the product I just talked about where I may consider just kind of cleaning it up and releasing it for free. Uh, this is the little racer that goes around the track, or maybe work on something as big as the RPG enemy AI project from uh, probably more than a year ago, which is uh, a little bit more complex. It is kind of a mess right now if you look at the code base, and it has World of Warcraft IP. I have some of the icons for like fear and disarm. This has been requested a while. I would love to take some time to clean this up <clears throat> and release it for free for the community but it does take some time. So I'd love to hear what you think about that. Should I be spending time on this versus something like updating our products, our paid products, right? Uh, or is there anything new that you'd like to see me work on? Uh, any ideas? Please leave them in the comments below. Then one quick thing, showcase prototype videos here. I do work on some things in the background that I do not share super highly experimental stuff, fun stuff that maybe I decide is not worth pursuing or maybe that eventually comes into one of my main assets. Uh, I do have a few things like, um, for example, a, I, I worked on a project that, that was doing procedural building generation uh, with procedural interior spawning. That was kind of the big thing. I know with PCG, it's kind of a pain to lay out all of the interior props and I was thinking maybe I could use a procedural rule set with a data table to spawn interiors like um, lamps, uh, beds, etc. That may eventually make it to PCG, but I started as a separate project. Uh, would you like to see a video showcasing those things? Again, this is just more of a curiosity thing. Would you like to see what's cooking kind of behind the scenes? Um, if not, that's fine. Uh, again, just an idea of something else um, that may be interesting. And finally, the educational content. That was the big, big thing that I started last year. And the first thing I did was obviously the Learn to Code course series. 
Uh, first of all, I have been completely blown away by the positive feedback that I'm getting. I am so, so happy that I invested that time into making that system. Um, even to this day, every couple of days, I see somebody comment on one of my videos, thanking me, giving me some feedback. Um, so so the, the, the impact to the community has been huge and it has been better than, than I expected. I expected it to be good, but I didn't expect the, 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 the reception to be this good. So uh, I do have two more lessons that I want to finish, believe it or not. The original plan including, included debugging, and that video was never made. And then I would like to add another lesson for optimization. So definitely we'll be making at least those two in the same format as part of the, as part of the Learn to Code course, so very highly edited. Uh, same format exactly. Uh, I started working on a big community project where I was. my idea was to share it with you guys and then work through the debugging and optimization and make that the course. Um, but I found out that that was way more complicated because there are very specific things that I want to talk about when it comes to debugging and optimization and trying to build a functional example that would hit every single example that I wanted to, to, to work on is extremely hard. And I find myself like spending a lot of time thinking about things that were not really necessary to teach you the concept. So I think I'm just going to go to a more traditional path where I'm just going to show you very specific examples of debugging and they're not going to be exactly connected in like this kind of grand cohesive vision. That means that I can get those out to you, uh, which is pretty much what really matters right now. Uh, then, and this is the more kind of experimental ideas that I love to hear from you. I would like to add some additional lessons to the Learn to Code course series, things like widgets. Um, how do you even create a UI? I mean, this is a basic fundamental thing. Uh, how do you use splines? How do you use the game framework, right? What, what the heck does, does that even mean? How do I use it? Input events, possessing different types of pawns, managing data like data tables or data uh, assets. Uh, so those are things that I wanted to include in the core course, but I decided that that was not necessarily as important. So what do you guys think? Would you love to see more lessons in, uh, in, in the same format? Or, and maybe in addition to, um, would you like to see a brand new series? Uh, and I am calling this brand new series, Let's Create. I've had this idea for a while and I love to do it. And the idea here is that instead of just teaching you concepts in a very high level, like, to learn, like, like the Learn to Code course, I go from start to finish and I work on a prototype slash game that I end up even releasing on, let's say, HIO for you to play around with. Uh, some possible ideas are like Frogger or Crossy Roads, maybe something like Temple Run or Crazy Taxi or Pac-Man. But again, the idea isn't to just get it done because I'm sure you can find tutorials on any of those on YouTube, but it is to take you step by step applying everything we learned from learn to code so you can see exactly how everything kind of fits together from start to finish so i would literally start with planning writing everything down on notepad exactly how i taught you to do it in um, learning to think like a programmer and then i would plan everything out and i'll show you how i would do it my process and how i would apply all of those things um, but then another question comes up which is what format would you guys like to see? Would you like to see a highly edited or scripted lesson? Or would you like to see a more free flow process video where I just record myself for two hours and you can see me go back and forth? That would be the true way, quote unquote, true way of, of you seeing exactly what I do as an experienced dev. There is going to be some back and forth where I try things out. They don't work. I go back and fidget with some numbers back and forth. So I can see value in either format, but I love to hear what you have to say. Would you like to see two hour videos, which is almost like I'm just live streaming and I'm just kind of talking as I go around? Or would you like to instead see like a 10 minute concise edited video where I can show you kind of the process, but you know, cut down all of the back and forth. Uh, yeah, so this is my plan for 2024. 
almost guaranteed that that some things fall off. Uh, this is extremely ambitious considering the amount of time that I have for development. So please do let me know what you think. And I actually have a quick Google Forms and I'm gonna leave a link in the video description. This is used for me to make decisions as far as what I prioritize. And, and I just wanna know what you guys are, are, are interested in. So again, this will take you literally two minutes. I wanna know out of all my products, uh, 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 well, out of these three, which update gets you most excited, uh, whether I should spend time working on free projects or would you rather me work on marketplace and educational content instead. If there are any other topics you'd like me to cover in the Learn to Code series uh, and then on the Let's Create series, what format would you like to see? And if you have any game ideas or mechanics that you'd like to see if I end up making that series. And finally, a free flow, just leave me any comments or feedback or suggestions that you like uh, from what you're hearing today. So again, this is kind of my plan for 2024. I love to hear your feedback. Please do take two minutes to answer that quick survey. I love to hear from you. Uh, thank you so much for all of your support, your encouraging comments, uh, the, co the community interactions. I love talking to you guys here on YouTube, on Discord. So let's keep that going for 2024. And I am super excited to hear what you guys have to say and to start working on all of the stuff that you see on the screen. So that's pretty much it, guys. Let me know what you think. Happy New Year if you're seeing this before the New Year. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care.